Welcome to Joe's Astrology. This is a special edition where I talk about Virgo and guilt. So if you are a Virgo, this video is for you. If you're just any person who has felt guilt before, this video is for you. But Virgo is associated with guilt and I have, I don't have any Virgo specifically, but I do have Capricorn and I, as we're making this video, the moon is currently on my Chiron as I decided to make this video and I did not do that on purpose. So Chiron can be associated with Virgo. So let's get into it. Virgo and guilt. And I want to distinguish between natural guilt and man-made guilt. Because most of the guilt that people are dealing with, especially Virgos, is man-made guilt. And it's guilt that we have created in, uh, in ourselves, in our own mind. And I felt this from a young age, as if you uh, have any sense of self-awareness, you would have felt this from a young age as well. And, um, and I'm talking about the man-made guilt. So I'm going to give you some, exa some examples. Uh, when I was younger, see, when I, well, the family that I grew up in, I'll give you a personal example. Family I grew up in didn't really, I didn't really suffer too much from this from my family. My, my parents were pretty freedom loving and maybe to a fault, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I'm not making any judgments. Uh, they probably were, I would say, were normal parents, but they didn't, uh, they didn't guilt trip me very much, if at all. At least, not, not that I remember. But there were people like my school teachers and people that I worked for. Now these people did, they did impose this guilt on me and I felt it. Um, and there was a guy I worked for when I uh, became, uh, when I first started working. And maybe it's because I respected him. And I would kind of seek out these people too, like like this guy. I would seek, seek them out unconsciously or subconsciously and... I'd want to do a good job for them. And Virgo is a sign that also has to do with work. And the workplace is probably the number one, at least where, uh, as of right now in the United States, the workplace is probably the number one violators of this, or the, one of the number one places that people feel this guilt. And I wanted to do a really good job for this guy. And when things weren't, didn't go well, he would come in, he'd give me like an evil... He'd give me that stare, and I'd be so afraid and feel so guilty for, for messing up, even though it really wasn't my fault, and you know I didn't know any better, etc. I was doing my best. Uh, I, mean, I was 18, maybe 17, 18 years old, and I would feel so guilty, and I'd feel ashamed, and I would fight with myself with this guilt, trying to get out of it. Like, why am I feeling this way? Don't, don't, here, here he comes, or here she comes. Don't feel guilty. Don't don't feel don't shame yourself and these are like these are the things I was naturally doing with in my own mind without really knowing what was going on and it got to the point where I really hated these feelings of guilt and I hated shame um, and when this came up I would just have this hatred just anger it would become anger uh, for feeling this way it's a nasty feeling and when I was um, in school I went to a Catholic school and I would you know, you'd get detention. Where I where I went to school, we'd get these things called conduct referrals, and I'd get so angry that I was being shamed. And I'd they'd bring this conduct referral home, and I would rip it up before my parents could see it, and they would have to sign it. So I'd rip it up and throw it in the trash, so they couldn't sign it. And this has come some of the behaviors that you know to me is natural. I think if you're going through this behavior, or you have no kids, or you have kids, or you yourself, this is natural behavior for someone who's being shamed when they probably shouldn't be shamed. And when I say that, that they shouldn't be shamed, um, you know, you're, let's use the workplace for an example. You shouldn't be shamed because, first of all, most people, I'm going to assume that most people are trying to do their best. And I do think that most people, especially Virgos, they're trying to do their best. They're doing the best they can. And, 
you know, the higher level of the higher level of consciousness would be reason. And I'm going to put up on the screen the map of consciousness that's presented by Dr. David Hawkins. And I'm sure he might not even be the one that came up with this, but I'm going to put it up on the screen. And as you can see, the guilt and shame is one of the lowest levels of consciousness. And we can bring that up to reason. And we get to reason where there are many, many people um, that are in reason, in a state of reason. And I think in this country and in, in the year that we're in now, he would argue that the average is that we're in a state of reason. But that doesn't mean that there aren't many, many people um, collectively still in this, dealing with this guilt and shame. And often at the workplace, you'll see that they try to, to get into a state of reason where they'll have meetings and they'll discuss with you, um, they'll discuss with you what's going on and how do you feel and kind of do like a psychological session with you rather than shaming you and like on the spot. But people who are in the workplace that maybe don't belong in those positions, they didn't really, uh, haven't earned it, or the business is in, the company is in a position where they can't do the training. So they end up, these people end up being in that position and they shame you, they guilt you, they react on the spot to your, um, to you. And they don't really have, they might not themselves be in this state of reason and to a point of controlling their emotions. So the workplace, we're still, we still have this occur many, many places. And if you're Virgo, um, we're going to get into some, I'm going to get into some um, solutions as well on how to deal with this. One is you don't back down. You stand your ground. No matter what, you stand your ground. You, you present that meeting for yourself. You call call that meeting into action for yourself, and you explain everything that that, that I'm explaining in this video. And if they don't get it, then fuck them. You got to get out of there as quickly as possible. Easier said than done, but if they don't get it, they might not get it. And uh, you know that. And if we, we look at that map, that's part of the that's part of the idea of consciousness. If they truly are firmly in that state of guilt and shame themselves, they're not gonna get it. And you need to go get around people who are in a state of reason. They can't be, especially if you're not in a position to help them, they're the ones in position, they're the ones in power, it's it's backwards. So back to this, um, you know, this idea of being in school, you know, we grow up in this and parents, depending on who your parents are, they can support this and not stand up for you. Because as a child, it's going to be difficult to stand up for yourself, unless you're someone like me. And you do stand up for yourself. Uh, another story: I had a teacher in fifth grade, and this can this is can get to the this is when it can get bad. Her name was uh, Mrs. Getzinger, and I fucking hated this lady because <clears throat> she was from the South. That's not why I hated her, but she was from the South, an old school, not the nice type of South, and she was always guilt, you know, throwing the guilt trip on you, shaming you, you know, pointing the finger shit like that and it got so bad that I as I stood up to this lady that she came up behind me one day and grabbed the back of my neck and I fucking lost it that was it right there it was over she there would be no more discussion after that uh, I'm not going to get into what happened but she never touched me again she never said a fucking word to me again and thank god she eventually left the school and Man, I have so many examples of this kind of this kind of shit too. Like, I had a basketball coach who would do that. He would hit people. He would smoke cigarettes in the in the locker room, and I stood up to him. And no one else. This is how bad it can get. No one else stood up to him. I ended up having to leave the team. And finally, this asshole years later got got banned from basketball, banned from the league, banned from the school, fired, etc. And he left. But no one listened to me because there's so much. They're so brainwashed into that this is like the proper way to act. And as I said, if you look at this map, you, there's not much you can do about it like with the basketball coach until they finally see the light, they come out of their own their own brainwashing, come into a state of reason, and they can actually um, you know, make a real assessment on what's proper and who should be guilted and who shouldn't be. 
and that guy, and I would get into like natural guilt. These people should be feeling natural guilt. That's natural guilt. And when we get into what natural guilt is, <clears throat> and Virgo is a sign of discrimination. So this is the also part of the problem. People don't know how to discriminate between man-made guilt and natural guilt, mostly because of religions. Religions will tell you that and religions, not just religions, the school system, uh, parents that don't know any better, don't know the difference between natural guilt and man-made guilt. And natural, even in a state of natural guilt, um, there is a proper way to act. For example, if take the people that I gave the examples and let's say you sincerely have hurt somebody you don't really it's not about feeling guilty it's it's about reflecting on that okay admitting okay I did that's something I don't want to do again and we see the square with Sagittarius learning that's something I don't want to do again this is also something we don't give enough time for we don't give time for this reflection we don't have time we're so busy you think that's something I don't want to do again and then you make a firm resolution. I'm not going to do that again. Or I'm going to try my best not to do that again. But to go into that and say, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't. I should not have done this. This is something that I admire my mom for. She, she really uh, knew, knew about this and talked about the shoulds and the should nots. So even if it is something we should feel guilty for or that we don't want to do again, natural guilt being be feeling guilty and shaming yourself is useless we can even go into the Pisces the opposition to feel compassion compassion for somebody else compassion for us that we're going to make a better decision the next time and it goes along with this whole idea of going to hell complete bullshit doesn't exist and see people have to do that work on for themselves they're not gonna listen to me who am I? You know, they're going to listen to the authority or what they perceive as the authority. And they have to spend time around these people, which is another problem. And they, and they, um, if they do stand up to them, they might end up separating, having to separate themselves from their community. And that can lead to feelings of abandonment, etc. It's just, this is a massive, massive problem. But this is something that you can do for yourself and yourself only. Internally, at the best, at best internally, other people might not, you might not be able to, or you might not have to stand up to people like I did, but you could at least have an internal knowing what the difference between man-made guilt and natural guilt is. And this can go even to the point where, um, you know, a lot of people would agree that if you're in a relationship. I'd say most people think that if you're in a relationship, marriage, whatever, mar even if you're married, and you decide that you want to explore other relationships, they would consider you a bad, they might consider you a bad person, or that you should feel guilty. And I do think there is some, to some degree, a natural guilt for cheating. And part of the reason why I think people cheat is because they don't want to feel guilty. And having that conversation with somebody, can they can definitely, they're probably going to be guilted by the other person. But the proper way to handle that is to come clean and, and honestly discuss what you're going through. Let's say you've been in a relationship for five years, ten years, or whatever. It doesn't even matter. Sit down and say, look, this is what I'm going through right now. And I want to see it through. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. And of course, I want your understanding. I appreciate your understanding. But you know, um, you might not get you might not get their understanding, and they're going to guilt you. And this is something that people would disagree. They'll disagree on. They'll say that that's wrong. I don't think that that's wrong. I think if you could be honest, the people, the cheaters, etc., if they could just be honest. Maybe separate for a time and come back. And some of the thoughts and the things that people think are delusional. 
And that's part of the reason why, another reason why we're suffering from guilt, because their beliefs are delusional. I mean, I could just go on and on with the, the examples. I hope this isn't getting too long. I'll give you another example, with, especially with children. The, the environments that we put our children in. You think of some of these, it reminds me of what I'm in. I'm in stores. You're at stores and these kids are in these three-year-olds, two-year-olds, four-year-olds. They're in these stores. They have no business being in the store at all. And if you're going to bring a kid to, to a store, then you're going down this, this road where you're probably going to have to guilt the kid because the kid's going to do something in the store that's inappropriate. He's going to be confused because he wants to play. And you're going to guilt him for being playful. So there's another example where the kid has to learn how to act in a store at an age where he's not even at an age of reason to understand how to act in a store. And then, unfortunately, what's going to really happen in his psyche is he's going to feel guilt. He or she's going to feel guilt. And we don't really see it. The unconscious parents don't see it that way because they are, they're busy. This is how you act. I have to teach you. And there's another example where the parent feels guilty for not teaching their kid. I have a friend who does this. And he goes on and on about parents not raising their children right. And it's because he feels he feels guilty. He would feel guilty. He's got to raise his, parent, raise his kids right because if he makes a mistake, you know, He's going to feel that guilt and, and shame. And it all comes down to being in this state of guilt and shame yourself. Now, of course, as I said before, they're not going to understand this, fortunately. So if we look here at the map of consciousness, there's so many things here you have to get past. Look at the bottom. Shame, guilt, blame, humiliation, miserable, vindictive. You know, you hear all these stories online where people are like, uh, want to get back at people, talk about the narcissist, the, all this stuff, complete ignorant people that are all under, in this pink area in survival mode. And you have to climb this ladder. You get to a point of, ap you might get to a point of apathy. Well, I just don't care. Someone tries to guilt me for man-made guilt. I don't care. And then they look at you and they say, you don't care. That's right, I don't care, because I'm climbing the ladder. You might regret doing that. You're in grief, regret. And then you get to fear, anxiety. See people, all these people that have anxiety issues, fear issues, you're climbing the ladder. And you get to a point where your desire is so strong, you just don't care. You're, you're going to do it. You're, you're, you're craving. You're in this state of enslavement, and you know it, and you want out. You might get angry. I spoke about me getting angry. Prideful. Cur and then this is where it gets it gets interesting. When you get the courage to stand up for yourself and you have the willingness to accept that these people are the way they are, you hear like that Jesus, you know, forgive them for they not they do not know what they do. That's what he's talking about. When you get to that point, you can reason, and that's when you can stand in, their stand in front of these people as a stoic. And this, this is what, this is how you become a stoic. This is a true way to become a stoic. You got to do all this work here. All these colors. You got to do all. You got to go through all this work, and then you can become a stoic. Till then, you're faking it. And if you want to go real far, and you can actually survive around these people in a state of love, joy, peace, then that's that's when you you know you're you're a master. But most Virgos are going down they're down here. They're figuring this out. They're figuring this out and um if you want to, I'm all for I'm all for if you know if it doesn't get bad, ruin your life. I'm all for hanging in there for people with people. And not sabotaging relationships, not cutting people off, blocking people. These, if you find yourself blocking people, you're probably down here in this um, state of anger, fear, hatred. Especially if you're the one that wants, you know, they're, if they're, you're the one that wants to. Uh, wants to stand up to somebody and say, I'm not going to feel guilty for this man-made man -made guilt. 
um, you know, if they're willing to hang in there with you and listen to you, that's that's the step. That's that's you're you're going through the steps. If you're blocking people and they're willing to hang in there with you, but I'm all for blocking people and cutting people out if they're really um, if they're really in that state of shame and guilt and they're not willing to learn. So it's a long video here. I feel strong. If you can't tell, if you, if you aren't able to tell, I feel really strongly about about this subject. I do uh, uh, in my astrology readings. I will definitely be focusing on this with people. I have in the past, um, so it's definitely something I want to work with. Work on work with on my work with. Yeah, work on myself. Continue to work on work on myself with and work on this with other people. So. I uh, hope this finds you well and um, have a great day.